let's get cracking. So um, I'm Massa, director of the PTC UK. Um, so in case you're not hugely familiar, the PTC is unique. Um, I've actually, me and Beata, we have actually joined the team not that long ago. We're still the newbies at the moment. And I have to say, and I am selling it, but I have to say it was the most wonderful experience on day one when I went in for my own interview. It was an incredible air. The whole thing was just nothing that I've ever ever experienced before but one of the main thing about this particular course is it's not just weekends here and there it is 16 days part-time so it's not a full-time course you can do it part-time uh, particularly if you're looking at the cert PTC uh, certificate it is part-time but it spans over the course of the year from September till June and so naturally you can imagine the the timetable is really robust everything is covered we talk about teaching beginners from children's young very young children to adult uh, beginners as well and then we also talk about how to cope with the intermediate pupils this is quite often where we lose a lot of our, our pupils when they reach the intermediate level for various reasons and of course we also talk about the advanced uh, standard of pupils as well and of course we also cover the psychology improvisation these are two elements which I found it particularly interesting because I come uh, well, originally I was born in Japan and I come from a fairly conventional background of piano tuition myself so it was the old good old middle C approach where now you will I'm sure Sally would say how not necessarily ideal the middle C approach is at all and I was literally falling in that trap of trying to have this odd posture to reach the middle C with both hands and I did taught, teach with that uh, for a long time as well so it was all an eye-opener but certainly uh, Lucinda who was my predecessor she talks about the psychology as well the pupil teacher relationship the inner parent she talks about the psychology of performance as well which because I do a lot of performance as well I found it particularly interesting myself and this is something that all the team members will quite happily say that we do learn from each other as well it is in a way our continued professional development as well every time we go there we sit in each other's lectures and we do learn a lot as well and and stimulate and inspire and it's just a wonderful environment altogether but from the, the psychology to the improvisation which as i said is quite often missed because naturally they're not always in the exam syllabus and sally is a specialist in that field as well of the resources and I'm sure you've heard of the curious piano teachers uh, which Sally spearheads as well and she's also just published a new book a series of books as well for for beginners um, which I'm sure she will she will be coaxed into talking about as well um, so she's the the resources we talk about and this is the piano teachers course for the 21st century we are at the cutting edge of these new resources that are coming from Australia, America. We are always having our antennas and uh, being aware of what the current trend is and how some of the new approach really does make a difference. We also talk about Dalcros, Kodai. We do cover all these elements of teaching as well. But also, more traditionally, we do talk about the stylistic considerations of the Baroque music. How do we approach it? Everything from pedaling to the actual textures, music, interpretation and then we move on to the classical romantic impressionism 20th century we do cover the whole lot of these stylistic considerations as well so we really uh, don't have any stones unturned now all this is brilliant but on top of this we have particularly if you want to do the cert PTC if you are not keen to have the pressure of the assignments you don't have to do them we also have the CPD route as well which you still get a certificate and you can put it on the wall nevertheless but if you want to be extra challenged we do have the third PTC where you have three main assignments the essay assignment the teaching assignment and the performance assignment the, <clears throat> the essay assignment we start off it's the written assignment you have a broad uh, topic and questions to choose from and all this you will work with your personal tutor 
Um, so you will be guided and they are the, the first go to if you have any questions or you're stuck about something or you just want to ask any general ideas, bounce of ideas, your personal tutor, tutor is the, the first person to, to go to. So you will be guided through. It's not a scary thing. Uh, but the essay assignment is an interesting one because we do have from the ABRSM. If you are then interested to do the DIP ABRSM, which Beata will talk about in a minute, um, we do have exemption for the written assignment portion of the DIP ABRSM requirement if you attain the CERT PTC. Now the essay questions um, from a few years ago do now we do incorporate the AB, DIP ABRSM questions as well although we do allow for a lot longer uh, word count so you can ex explore more at depth the field of question that you want to look at. Now whilst I said there is an exemption you will only get a pass because of the way the system works you will only get a pass so a lot of our past students who have done the CERT PTC still wanted to redo the written assignment anyway and now we have the platform to you to really explore with more word counts and then you can narrow it down again you will of course get feedback on your essay assignment although I should add these are marked on the on the basis of our marking criteria the PTC marking criteria not that of the DIP ABRSM so <clears throat> that's something to bear in mind as well so that's the essay assignment and the teaching assignment is a particularly unique one now of course with the lockdown uh, i'm sure you find that a lot of us have had to go online and we are much more used to seeing our pupils on screen ourselves on screen and yet for the teaching assignment you will be submitting in total three of your own teaching videos so it's not um, some people because of the lockdown had to send a zoom recording as well but um, we find that most of them will set up a camera in the teaching practice the teaching room and you will be submitting a up to 30 minute uh, lesson of your own uh, now again it's nothing scary the first one is just a practice uh, video it's just so that the people get used to the whole thing you get used to the the camera being trained at you uh, at you as well so it's just a, literally and then also the upload process the 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 compression conversion all these practice so it's just a very easy way to get into it and then the second uh, video you submit is called the first case study video where it does matter a little bit more you will get a more in-depth uh, uh, ev uh, uh, evaluation feedback from your uh, tutor and then you have the final case video which is assessed so uh, that's what you're leading towards and that starts all the way from December and the final case is submitted in March so it is again something of a long span which is certainly very unique to the PTC as I said at the beginning it's not a sort of a weekend course that you dip in in and out of it's all structured in a way with a whole uh, year-long timetable in mind so you won't really miss anything you really um, we're going through everything the final performance assignment does incorporate again the analysis as well as program notes and a write-up uh, but again I say analysis but not the sort of academic analysis uh, they're not what we're looking for making music the meaningful music making is always at the heart of everything we do um, so even the analysis should be geared towards the, the musical element the musical meaning rather than purely academic so uh, you will be uh, analyzing your uh, choice of the grade six to eight standard uh, piece of no more than about three minutes so again it's not something that's too long by grade six to eight some of the pieces are quite long so you do have to choose something that's not too long and you will be giving your final performance in June which will be in front of everyone but again we start off back in the October weekend with duet playing and then eventually we do the grade one to three so it starts off very very uh, uh, very very easily and very very kindly and Lucinda will always talk about the psychological element and as I always say we will of course we will be giving feedback but one of the important thing of course is your own reflection we learn a lot from our own reflection so there are ample opportunity for you to have the opportunity to reflect on everything you do as well I think we've just got a question what grade does one have to have achieved we do say that you should have the performance grade 8 
standard but we have had students who were working towards it and that's something we can we can talk about if you're not sure do talk to Rihanna about it and um, we can have further chats so if you don't quite have your grade 8 just yet um, it goes for some people we have very very uh, incredibly varied intake of students someone who has just finished conservatoire to someone who's done their grade 8 30 40 years ago so in a way they all come from different backgrounds so don't feel that oh maybe this is not for me just because of what's on the paper at all talk, talk to us yes in some countries don't even do grades do they Marcel? that's right um, there are various um, if you like there are various different qualifications that we've certainly accepted and we had some students from Latvia where they had their own things so uh, by all means don't feel intimidated about the requirements or you might be thinking well actually grade 8 is not a problem um, but uh, don't worry about that side of things uh, do talk to Rihanna uh, about um, those technicalities it's not something that you need to to worry about but uh, technically we do say to get the cert PTC you would want to have achieved grade 8 uh, on the on, on the piano um, so that, that's that I think sums it up the performance assignment is the final assignment you have but as I said we will be easing everything in gently as I said some people might have been quite familiar uh, with performing very recently but others may not have played in front of people for for uh, decades so um, we will be but we all come from different backgrounds uh, we do tailor to each student that we have so we don't have to worry about that side of things as well but um, so there we are so that's the essay uh, teaching and the performance assignments which is also a very unique element and as I said you will learn an awful lot from your own reflection as well as hopefully from all our feedback as well as particularly if you want to attend on site this is also invaluable we have really found that quite often in fact I would go as far as to say without exception you you make lifelong friends piano teaching can be quite an isolated uh, business but here at the Purcell school you you share the table to have meals together and we have sort of like the late night parties with cabaret type talent shows as well towards the end of the the year we have various things going as on as well and people do like to go to the pub it's a pub for the police force so it's a very safe pub um, just opposite uh, the Purcell school uh, which we like to frequent as well um, so uh, there's an ample opportunity for socializing as well and that's where again a lot happens a lot of exchanges of views experiences ideas a lot can happen in these opportunities as well so if you can we do recommend that you do attend on site however the online element has been a big feature we have gone hybrid uh, this year um, so we do have all the lecture recordings are recorded for you to watch later on as well throughout the course of the year until the the the, the academic year is over uh, you, you do have access to the, the all the recordings of the lectures as well and if you do sign up online you get extra tutorial extra tutor time with your personal tutor after the two long weekends as well as a set thing of course as I said you are always free um, within reason we always say let's be reasonable we don't really want to be answering phone calls every day but um, apart from the fact that you do have your personal um, tutor at your disposal you will be set a uh, appointment uh, for extra tutorial after the two long weekends uh, as well if you sign up online and there will be online meetups as well which has worked very well so you won't be missing out on these elements either but I think I've done enough talking and we're all sat here and getting a little bit rigid so perhaps I may uh, pass on to Sally thank you so much Massa yes and I'm going to just do a, a, a song and an activity with you in a moment but I just want to pick up on some of the points that Massa has just made because he's kind of given you a, a really lovely overview of the course and there is a lot of work there and you might be thinking oh why do I need to do all this why you know that's that's an awful lot of work well on the PTC the piano teachers course it is quite a unique course we know this um, but we all believe that music and the piano is something of value we believe that music and the piano has an impact a real impact on people's lives whether they are the children the adults who are learning or the families around them we also believe that learning the piano isn't about going from grade one to grade two to grade three and then giving up. 
So if you come on the PTC, you'll find that you discover how to motivate people beyond grades. Put grades to one side. They are the cherry on the cake. They are not the cake itself. And what you find on the PTC is how to make that cake. You'll find the ingredients that Massa has outlined that will help you to run a really successful 21st century teaching studio. Now I say 21st century and Massa has also mentioned that. I know from the research I did uh, for my PhD 10 years ago that most of us as piano teachers get feel quite stuck in what we do. We feel like we repeat the way that we were taught which is mostly in the UK, to be honest, the graded exam system. And we don't always know how to get out of that. It is really hard because the tradition that we've all inherited, and you'll hear more about this on the course on the very first day, the tradition that we've all inherited is such a strong one that individually you can't break through it. It's really hard to do that. But together as a profession, and if you come to the PTC, you begin to become part of that. The course will work as a catalyst that will push you away from and will show you how to open up and incorporate all the things you've been doing before. You're not going to absolutely change, but you are going to have more ingredients available to you to bring into your teaching. And that makes you a better teacher. And all this reflection that you're going to do through writing your assignments, it makes you a, a better learner as well. And therefore, yeah, once again, you become an even stronger teacher. And therefore, you become somebody who um, parents and adults want to come to. You stand out. You become more individual in the way that you're teaching because you are not a traditional teacher. So... Massa has already spoken about middle C approach and um, I do a whole series of lectures in your first weekend where I talk about teaching beginners you know and you'll hear me say time and time again beginners need the best teachers teaching beginners is the hardest thing of all because you have to get it right they don't understand a single thing and by that these days I also mean things like pulse rhythm pitch quite often the music that's going on in schools it's really really declined you're in a very lucky situation if you know that you're getting children from a school where there is a lot of music quality music education going on quite often and I know this from my other hats that I wear where I go into schools and classrooms teachers just do not have the expertise to be able to deliver this so your job as a piano teacher is also to put in the musicianship so here's a little song for you. Old Mr. Woodpecker sitting in a tree. Old Mr. Woodpecker singing merrily. Now, if you could all make sure you're on mute, because otherwise that will completely sound rubbish. I'm just going to get my, my tapping sticks out and I've got down here, I can't, can't see it, but I've got my big box of musical goodies, look, ha ha ha, I've got all sorts of things in there including toys, I've got some of my toys out here, you might be thinking how can that be part of a piano lesson, well it's all about making music, it's all about engaging children, it's all about getting them um, excited by what it is they're doing and motivated this is what it does so i'd like you to be the woodpecker if i was doing this with a child i, I would say mm, do you know i have woodpeckers in my garden at least i used to i've moved house recently no woodpeckers in this garden lots of birds like curlews but no woodpeckers and i don't have a song about a curlew unfortunately so could you be a woodpecker and it's a green spotted woodpecker, and you're going to tap back the rhythm pattern of the words. I'm going to sing, and then we'll tap together, and I'll invite you to join in. Off I go, old Mr. Woodpecker sitting in a tree. Let's tap. Old Mr. Woodpecker sitting in a tree. Old Mr. Woodpecker tapping merrily. That was lovely. This time, can we do it again? And could you say the words? I bet you almost know them by now. Could you say the words along with me? 
Now, the saying of the words is a really, really important feature because that means that they're having to cognitively engage with words. It's one thing just to copy, which is what you're all doing at the moment. I bet you're not actually quite saying the words, you're leaving me to do that hard work. See, this is the other thing that we tend to do as piano teachers, we tend to work far too hard. The work should be going on with our pupils. They're the ones that are doing the learning. What signs of learning are taking place, I wonder? So let's do it again, I'll sing, and then could you all tap back to me and say the words as you tap? Off I go. Old Mr. Woodpecker sitting in a tree. Old Mr. Woodpecker tapping merrily. Oh, fantastic. There were some really good words going on. I could, I could tell and everybody was tapping really, really clearly. So we can use this to begin to introduce what is called, what I call rhythm language. And rhythm language gives children a way into um, understanding and recreating rhythms for themselves. So um, I'll, just tell, I'll just show you what I mean. Just listen to old Mr. Woodpecker. This time, instead of saying the rhythm pattern of words, he's gonna say something different. Can you work out what it is? Off I go. Ta, ti, ti, ta, ti, 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 ta. What did you hear? And hopefully they would say, I oh, heard ta's and I heard titi's. And I would describe that as being rhythm language. So this is a tool that helps the children to get to the rhythm. Metrical counting is far too hard for most children who are aged six, seven, eight. They just can't cope with it. Counting one, two, three, four, let alone one and two and three and four. Because of, yes, of course, I'm including quavers in this, aren't I? But quavers aren't a problem if you're using this rhythm language and it will allow children, they get rhythm so quickly. And then we might play some games. So could you echo, we're gonna do copycat, off I go. Ta, ta, ti, ti, ta, your turn, ta. So that's just a little, uh, a little sort of flavour of the sort of activities that um, I will do, and you get a blast of me and a blast of Lucinda um, every morning of the course, and we do something called sing then play. Lucinda focuses on improvisation and playing chords. So yes, you will all be improvising. Yes, you will. And yes, you can do it. And yes, you'll be a bit worried about it. But yes, you'll find that it just goes, oh my goodness, I didn't realize I could do that, honestly. Um, and with me, you, you get these activities that you can use with young children and with older children as well that focus on the musicianship. Because inside every pianist, there has to be a musician. And too often we neglect that. And therefore, you know, part of what I've just shown you is one of our four guiding principles is that meaningful music making is at the heart of the lesson. Less talking, how much do you talk in your lessons? Less talking, more music making. So I'll just quickly go over the other three guiding principles and I'm gonna hand over to, to Bayarta. Um, so we've had, um, placing meaningful music making at the heart of the lessons, establishing musical knowledge and understanding in theory and practice. Well, we've just been doing rhythms, haven't we? That's exactly what, what that pr principle is. Developing technical and pianistic skills and effective practicing strategies. No, that doesn't bring that one in, but nevertheless, we were practicing, I suppose you could say, and creating a positive and professional atmosphere in your lessons. Definitely, we were all doing that together. And you'll find that this, these guiding principles will completely envelop everything that you begin to do. It absolutely, we've worked really hard on these over a number of years. It absolutely sums up our role as teachers. Okay, so I'm gonna pass over to Beata, who I think is going to talk about, eventually about the diplomas. Over to you, Beata, thank you. Thank you very much, Sally. Actually, you can also it's such a fun course. I mean, Sally creates such an element of 
fun and cooperation and of um, active participation. It's not a course where you're, you're sitting all day long and taking notes, but no, you're getting involved. And Lucinda, of course, who's the course founder, at one stage brings all the keyboards in and she does a keyboard um, chord playing, exploring your left hand chords, your tonic, your dominant, your subdominant chords uh, and further chords so that you, you actually learn and you get gently directed into playing by ear, um, which is again something that a lot of students say they've never done this before or they're afraid of it. They've never done any improvisation, but they would like to. And Lucinda is the sort of person, is the person that will gently guide you there, as well as the other tutors as well. So that's some, and another thing that a lot of students <clears throat> say when they start with us is, oh, we're really scared of performing. That's something that we, we, we become, play, you know, our nerves get the better of us and we just fall to pieces playing in front of people. Well, this is something that is so common to all of us. And we will just take this on face on. We will actually address it. We will take the worries away from you. We will give you the little safe circle of your tutor group. That will be anything between four, five or six students in one group with the tutor. And you will do things like play a grade one to three piece in that session but just in the way a teacher would so you would do it as a as a teaching example uh, you would sit down and play maybe just an excerpt of that so that gradually over the course of the year you get used to playing in front of your colleagues your friend who will become your friends and then eventually as Massa said you will do the duets you will do trios even six hands and we've even done in April we have got, uh, we did eight, 12 hands at one stage on two beautiful grand pianos at the Purcell School. Um, a lovely arrangement by um, Laura Shaw of Sally Gardens, which was a piece that came up over and over again. Um, so th there shouldn't be, this is a cause that should, is there for you? And not something that brings up your fears, but no, that encourages you to carry on from where you're at. And um, I wanted to just share a little before I'm talking a bit about the diploma course because I'm going to be a diploma tutor. I wanted to just share a little video with you that we did at the very end of the April course. And it was, oh, there it, oh, well done, Rihanna. It was a sing and play that we were asked to devise together uh, by. Uh, by Lucinda, so it, this is what normally happens in the morning, uh, by run by Sally or Lucinda. But no, it's the students who did this, and we were um, we were learning about bass lines, about hearing our left hands, hearing the one, the six, the five, the four, the different steps, which of course underlie uh, the the main harmonies, and then we were also we'd been working on rhythms and how to approach this, uh, maybe setting up like a little um, a little musical item for, for pupils and how to get them involved. So that's those two things. And it was one of the pieces that one of the students under on the piano um, had been playing in the grade one to three concert that we have in, um, in April as well, I think, or was it February? No, it was in April, the grade one to three, maybe it was February, I'm getting my months mixed up, but not to worry, early on in the course. And it was a um, fantastic little jazzy piece. And so we just, so together, uh, six or eight of us decided, well, we're going to use that piece and we're going to explore it and do a little, uh, that little musical moment out of it. And behind under, you can see the online students, so they were also involved. So Massa's wonderful hybrid course really worked well on this um, at this moment, and you you can get a little glimpse, a little sample of that. So shall we play it and just see what happened? Uh, so, so so this so this is are you ready? This is our last. 
sing and play of the PTC April course and it is student led. Yes. <laughs> okay, if you look high at the one, we're going to do one, five, two, five, one, two, three, four, off you go now. One, two, five, two, five, one, two, five. One, two, five. things. So I, I, I'm sure you can see that it really had a lot of fun, a lot of learning was going on as a super spirit of togetherness. Everybody's got WhatsApp groups, shares things together. Um, so it becomes a community, PTC. Um, now I'd like to just uh, outline a little bit to you the, the diploma course that we've been running uh, in its, it's running its fourth year. Um, and that's the uh, diploma for teaching diploma for the ABRSM. Um, I was actually the guinea pig running it four years when I first joined. Then Lucinda did these last uh, last years, and I think I'll take it on again, as far as things look for now. And it's just a very it's a very exciting course. It builds up beautifully on onto the PTC, as Sally was mentioning. Um, in that the, the the essay that needs to be part of it can be taken over from the PTC, um, but that's only one of three parts. So we've got an essay, a viva voce, and quick study in the actual exam. This is a, a teaching exam, so not the performing diploma, but the teaching diploma. And um, we would spend the year getting together, exploring lots and lots of issues again to do with teaching, but at a slightly, probably a slightly more comprehensive level, because when it comes to the exam, really, we need to be seen <clears throat> as rounded teachers who are quite well versed in different aspects of teaching. Things to do with stylistics, pedaling, beginners, postures, technique. So we'll pick up lots of things that we find PTC students have already delved in quite deeply, so they've got, definitely got an advantage there. But we've also had students who've not done the PTC, and it's been a really worthwhile experience for them as well. Uh, on site, we, we share the on-site time, so we'll have one room for the PTC for the PTC and one for the diploma students, or several rooms where we practice and do things in, but. We join for meals and we often have the diploma students join in with lectures. So you do get a bit of a flair of the PTC as well, especially when the lectures are relevant. And I'm thinking here, for example, Graham Fitch, who is one of our uh, uh, tutors, who you may well know uh, from his online academy. He does, for example, a lecture for the PTC on the Baroque. Um, performance practices and background and instruments and that of course is very important all around for PTC and diploma students so we would see we would listen to those lectures together um, and or let's say a lecture on impressionist style that Ilga is running so again we would timetable that together and there, there's also a nice interchange then you would get to know the students that do the PTC although you yourself may be a diploma student, and they would get to know you. So there's a little bit of cross-fertilization going on there. And we have, by the way, wonderful meals in the Purcell, if you're lucky enough to be on site. Um, and it's a lovely setup. The pianos are beautiful. I don't know if Masa said, but it's a really inspirational place in that sense. Anyway, back to the diploma. There is 
the issue of sight reading. So throughout the year, uh, you would get lots and lots of practice in refining your grade six level sight reading skills. So that's something that, again, the starting diploma students may be a little bit worried about. They say, oh, we can't sight read a grade six piece. You know, we may be OK with a grade three or four, but not a six. Well, worry not, because step by step, we will give you so much material and give you clues what to do, how to keep the left hand going, how to side read in sections, how to quickly see what is necessary, that little by little people will get, and we have seen the students growing on those levels so that eventually they reach their grade six side reading level and will get through the exam. So that's something they need to do. There's also a little performance element, but again, it's only grade six pieces that you might be asked to play either in whole, but more likely as an excerpt as part of the diploma exam. Um, and you would have to prepare three of those pieces to have really up your sleeve so you can do that. And they would form part of your Viva Voce. But again, we prepare you for that. We give you lots of performance opportunities of those pieces one by one within your little tutor group. So you feel safe, you don't feel exposed, and you, you know, of course, there's a little, not a worry, but you know what that feeling you've got inside you when you go to a piano lesson, and you want to be well prepared, but you think, oh, you don't know how it's going to go. Of course, that's there. We've all had that. We all know what that is. But it, A, it spurs you into doing a bit of extra practice, to really polishing your pieces as much as you can, and then B, you just try and come to terms with that and make the best of, of the, the place that you are at um, and also improve over and over um, these weeks, that we, these weekends that we see each other. Now, we have a wonderful lady that's also on the team and she's called Julie Costley White. She's an ABRSM examiner and she is very experienced in examining diplomas. And she would come in um, already in, in the November, but then also pops in in January and in the February workshop. Um, and then finally in April, we'll give you a mock exam and we'll talk things through with you. So she would say what is, is expected of you and how you go about it and where you still have weaknesses, where your strengths lie. Um, so she's a wonderful um, extra tutor we have on board. That, that gives us a real direct and fresh angle on what the ABRSM um, mean with their diploma syllabus and with their expectations and their standards. So she is absolutely lovely. Um, oh, we haven't talked much about Ilga, who is our fifth tutor. Um, she is a Latvian pianist, wonderfully experienced. People absolutely love her. She's one of the PTC student, uh, tutors. And she has so much experience uh, to bring to the course and attention to detail and personal warmth and dedication. She couldn't be here today. She was there yesterday for the webinar. So um, but I think we've now mentioned all the tutors. Am I right? I may have left somebody. No, I think we have. So, I, yeah, that's probably all I have to say about the... Um, diploma, but I, we've got a little time now. Honestly, shoot us some questions. Uh, let us know what you would like to ask. But I think, no, actually, before we do that, let's just go back to Massa, I think, who will lead the Q&A um, and will wrap up our presentations this morning. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, uh, Graham Fitch, as uh, Beata touched on. Um, you might have heard he does specialize on the memorization and practice strategies. Um, so it is broad what we cover. And there, there are a couple of questions coming in. Um, in fact, Sally has just asked, would you be more interested at this stage in the PTC or the ABRSM dip, which you can just put in the chat if you like. And European piano teacher, you have to... Shall I answer that one? Yeah. This, this is from Hindi, and Hindi, you did the, um, the EPTA course back in 2001. Well, I, I, was, 
I actually joined um, the EPTA course, as it was then called, sort of back in 2001. Um, and at the time it was, because um, this has developed on from that, we're no longer part of EPTA, but it's developed on from that. It had a major rehaul, because if you remember at the time, it was alternate Sundays from January to June, I think it was, and everything was kind of all, I don't know whether I was on the course when you, you did it, but I, I think I started in the September or the January 2001, possibly, or maybe it was the next year, don't know. Um, but at the time, it, it's changed substantially. It, it really has. It's uh, in 2008, it, um, that's when we first went to the Purcell School and it became a residential course. There wasn't all the coursework. I don't think it, you can compare the two at all, actually, just thinking about it. You know, Lucinda was part of it and, and Lucinda's ideas have developed. I've part of it and, and my ideas have developed massively as well. Um, so it is substantially different, deeper and more reflective nowadays. OK, hopefully that's answered your question. Thank you. If we do the um, DIP ABRSM with you, um, that means we're doing the, the exam. We will have um, those letters after our name. Will you pass it? Yes. You would definitely. Yeah, absolutely. And um, I think somebody was asking about the entry requirements, which is indeed grade six theory. But there is also a very wonderful uh, practical musicianship that the ABRSM do. I don't know if you've come across it, but it's um, it's a very it's a very good hands on alternative to the theory. And that is also accepted, as well as a whole lot of other substitutions, which I can mail you, but you can find on the on their syllabus as well. But I think we can point people in the right direction to for assistance, can't we, Rihanna? Oh, yeah. um, to, to help with, with grade six theory. Um, and I think people do it during the year. I think that's that's also happened, hasn't it? Before yes. Yeah. You don't have to have it for us to accept you on the course, as long as we know that you are going that you are doing it, that you're working on the on the grade six if you haven't got that or something alternative. Because I think for example, A level music is accepted as a substitution. I think I need yeah. to look at, look yeah, into I'm the someone that asked right. music. So um, yeah, so that would that would be a substitute, would it? Yeah. If I can just clarify, I mean, we, so if you do the, the teaching diploma course with us, it's a course to prepare you for the diploma. We don't enter you for the exam. That's your responsibility. And you would do that in discussion with your tutor once you've finished, or once you're coming to the end of the course. So the questions about permitted substitutions, they're not really questions for us. You would need to go to ABRSM and ask them directly if what you have is suitable or if you would need to take the grade six um, theory and get that before you can enter. So, so yes, we prepare you for it, but we don't we don't do the entrance for you. Um, They're listed, so, Diana, The substitutions are listed on the syllabus. They are listed. Yes, yes. Um, you must be certain. Go to the ABRSM and ask them, basically. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, but as, as Sally said, um, I actually do a grade six theory course, um, which sort of runs parallel to the, the courses. I mean, we have certain PTC students who do that as well. Um, it's not restricted to diploma course students. Um, and that normally starts in about October and runs for three or four months. Um, so the, the two courses that we have, the CERT PTC and the teaching diploma course, um, we always suggest that the CERT PTC is really the place to start because this will give you the best grounding for going on to doing the teaching diploma. If you are interested in doing the teaching diploma and you haven't done the CERT PTC, then you'll need um, a consultation with the tutor, which will be Beata, who is running the course, the diploma course next year, um, which is not impossible. It can be, it has been done, um, can be arranged. Um, but really, the CERT PTC is where you'll get the most comprehensive teacher training because it is designed around what teachers need. It's not designed to a syllabus, 
which is what the diploma is. You know, we have to meet the requirements of the diploma on that course, whereas the CERT PTC is purely what does a modern piano teacher need to know in order to engage their students to have a successful teaching practice? And that's really been the focus in developing that course. Beautifully put, um, Brianna. Thank you. Um, Do you yes, know but, that Brianna is actually a fantastic piano, that she was a student on the course herself in the distant times? <laughs> You're fantastic piano teacher and a super pianist I mean I've heard you play with <laughs> and now we're so well, it's thank so you. fantastic you offering the great and I know that um, uh, the diploma students last year have successfully done you know great six theory with you so thank you it's, it's great that that's on offer yes um, and, uh, and yes just just to confirm yes that is correct Hindi we, we don't do the entrance for the exam that is your responsibility, um, but you're not on your own. I mean, you have your tutor with you who will advise and support you, um, but it is up to you to actually submit the application once once the course is finished. And some, people for the like, some people do like to spend a bit more time, reflect on everything that was learned before they enter. So, you know, there's no pressure. It's not that you have to sit the exam uh, at the end of the, if you sign up to the DPABRS, I mean, it also does not mean that you do have to to um, to sign up to the exam straight away. So it does give you that flexibility in that sense. But as everyone said, you you do you do have the the, the luxury, if you like, of talking to the your tutor and really working out if you've still got any weaknesses or you feel very confident any areas that you want to further look at that sort of thing it's best to have a chat as you go along but um, indeed the actual um, process of entering the exam is up to you and also I think Martina I think maybe we have answered the question if you haven't done the PTC technically Hindi has actually attended something of the former body of the PTC, although as Sally said, it's nothing like what it used to be by any stretch of the imagination. As Rihanna has already beautifully put, the whole whole approach is the very holistic one. It's not just about piano, it's not just about even just about music, it's a whole who are we, what are we, and what do we want to do. It's, it's a very holistic approach to the whole thing. So if you haven't done the PTC, uh, we do strongly recommend that you do it will be an eye opener my eyes still open um here and there it's an incredible environment to sit in i just really feel it was a bit of a shame that um, of course some some of you come from derby sheffield it might have been a little bit far but um, before the lockdown purcell school used to allow us to have people who are interested in joining just to turn up on the day and really soak up the atmosphere i mean i just really feel it's a shame that you can't be with us uh, at Purcell, the environment is incredible, but um, you can you can see the the friendly nature of Sally and Beata, and of course we we don't have Ilga, who's lovely, and Lucinda and and Graham and everyone, um, and we actually have new tutors coming in as well. Jill Morton, you may have heard of, who's been a real saviour from the Alang Chang. If you are into the exams, you may have seen on YouTube that used to be the inevitable go-to. Um, for the, the, the exam recordings, but Jill Morton has been uh, compiling a catalogue of recordings which are much more, um, well, completely in a different um, approach. It's much more musical and it's a lovely collection that she's building. And we also have Chris Worsley who lectures at the Royal Northern uh, College of Music. So he has a very much more strength in the academic side of, of the music as well. So we have a very broad tutor and we met them, of course, and they are all lovely. Otherwise, we wouldn't have them on the course. I like to think when me and Beata went that uh, we were welcomed in the same way. We don't know because now I'm on that side. We chat about them, like not quite the gossip, of course, but we, we talk about sort of assessing, OK, so how are they? And, and now I'm thinking, what on earth did they talk about me behind? <laughs> don't <laughs> worry. I know Yoga said there was some very nice things and we had to, as you will, we had to submit teaching videos as well, which was really scary. Um, so you know, Lucinda said, you know, because it's very important to know how it feels. So we had to submit our teaching videos as well. And much later on, Yoga said, oh, it was really, really impressive, which was very nice of her to say. So uh, it's just the whole place is a lovely environment. So, um, you know, do, do consider uh, certainly the third PTC. But as Beata said, you won't be left out. Uh, if you 
opt for the deep ABRSM as well. And there's another question. Um, could you so maybe I can address the, the question about online. Um, um, Mass has done a very good job of setting up our hybrid course delivery this year, um, but we are definitely continuing with the online course delivery because, you know, the, the world has become a smaller place and we have students from all over the world. We have Hong Kong, um, Australia, New Zealand, places in Europe. Um, we've got really students from all over the world um, and even just Scotland um, attending online as well. So it's you have the option of attending lectures live or you can watch recordings afterwards. We do encourage you to attend as many of the sessions live as you can. But being online, you do have that flexibility because we understand that when you're at home, it's not the same as when you're on site and you're kind of shut out from the day to day life. It's not so simple when you're at home. So we do understand that. And if you can't attend a session, then you can always watch the recording afterwards. The recordings are available. Yes, sorry, yes. the timetable itself is based on on-site, so it does start, the, the full days, do, they do start at 8.45, I think, or 9, very early, well, early for some, um, and they, they can go on right up into the evening, so obviously it's a bit much to be sitting in front of the screen all day long, so, you know, you can, you can use the breaks wisely, but by all means, as Rihanna said, um, the recordings are generally made available about a week or so, possibly a couple of weeks after the, the weekend, so you can, by all means, look at the lecture recordings. And that goes for on-site as well, of course, but you can review and how, the... And how it works, um, sorry, Master, to interrupt you, it's there's a main um, teaching room. It's called their recital hall with, two, with these two pianos in it, two grands. And the, the, the cameras are set up there, so you can watch everything that's happening there. But there's also cameras set, set up in the tutor rooms. So we would then split up into tutor, tutor rooms, which are on the next level up, physically for those who are there um, and they're lovely um, rooms with two grand pianos side by side like in conservatoires and Massa set up uh, um, the laptops the the iPads there as well so anybody who's uh, online will then part, be part of the tutor group in there as well so as it will be carrying you from the main teaching room where everybody's together into the tutor room so you literally would be part of, of everything and that for the diploma groups as well so yeah so the, the diploma is a bit uh, separate but often as I said together with the PTC but they have their own room with their own cameras I mean I, I think we would all recommend that you come in person and that you sign up to come in person if you possibly can but then, of course, if something does go wonky your end with one of the weekends, so for example, in April, I caught COVID. <laughs> so I couldn't be there live at the Purcell. But what it meant is I was still able to give all my lectures, which was to my, my LR diploma group. I was still able to give all my lectures. And that was great. So it gives extra flexibility. But I would really recommend that you have the intention of coming live because you you miss so much. You really do. And energy, you just get that energy from each other. And we've talked about, you know, we're a community, we're a family. And as individuals, gosh, we sit on our piano stools all by ourselves. So it's just lovely to have other people around that you can sit and talk about piano things till you till your heart's content over lunch, over tea, over dinner, over a drink. Can I add something to that as well? Because we have got that international element and Lucinda is our international international outreach director. And we had, before COVID, we had planned to actually have a whole PTC brand in uh, Sri Lanka at the time. And there were also openings in Hong Kong. And now we've been asked by South Africa. And, you know, it's not impossible to think of possibly the, the PTC delivering in person with maybe just one or two lecturers of course there's a flight etc but in these far-flung places for us far-flung um that you know that is a possibility but at the moment as we're just coming out of covid i think we're probably going to just stay uk centered for another year but we are totally open to these possibilities and especially lucinda is keeping an eye on that isn't she am i am i right rihanna massa 
yeah. to an extent, but I think she's very relieved because <laughs> uh, she was the predecessor. As I said, she was the director of the PTC for many years. And, uh, and I think the administrative side has, it can be quite a burden. And I think at this stage, certainly she's very relieved that all these people, we, we had a very international, well, we, in fact, this year we have a very international um, intake. We have some people from New Zealand who are actually mm. practically doing night shifts and actually <laughs> attending all the, the, the entire days. I mean, they've turned their days around. It's incredible um, to attend everything, the performance and the workshops. You will have workshops as well where you get to play to Graham and us and everyone else. Um, if it's a classical workshop, you take a classical piece and you know you can ask questions and we can sort things out. But um, so there are people on the other side of the, the, the planet who, who do sign up at this stage. Um, so I think whilst there are, there were talks about entirely running the PTC UK, say in Hong Kong, training local teachers and um, having you know assessors there as well but at this stage certainly although we do seem to have a much more local um, uh, uh, showing today I think is as far as Derby Rihanna was born no she's not born but she, she's grew up in Orkney which is a remote island in Scotland so maybe that's as far as it goes for today's geographical um, diversity but no we've uh, got Lynn no no we've got Lynn from Botswana oh, in oh, Taylor right. Ah, there we are. Yeah, ah. hi, Lynn. <laughs> yes, of course. Um, so, yes, internationally, at this stage, we would certainly recommend that you do join online. And some people, because of COVID, it hadn't been possible, but some people do like to plan one of the big or two. We have the big long weekends in October and April and a slightly longer two-night uh, that's been planned at the moment. It all depends on Purcell because they are being a bit cautious with the COVID post-COVID situation at the moment, but we have long weekends in October and April and the June performance day is unfortunately just one study day. However, there are online people who do like to plan attending some of these long weekends uh, live on site by traveling um, because one of some of the long ones, it's, it's worth the worthwhile the flight and everything so uh, that's a possibility as well as Sally said we do really strongly recommend that you, you you attend you meet us and you soak up the atmosphere of the whole whole uh, whole course where, when you're there so uh, ideally online uh, on site but if you can't of course there are plenty of opportunities on online as well if that uh, clarifies the original question. I think that was quite an elegant, elongated answer, possibly, but hopefully that uh, clarifies some of the, the uncertainties. So I think we're just about coming to the end yep. now, aren't we? Um, I just wondered whether, Rihanna, as, as manager, do you want to just tell people a little bit about the sort of the more formal procedures of, of making an application and early birds and things like that in place? Yes. Yeah. So we we have a an early bird discount, which is ten percent off course fees, which is valid until the end of June, end of next month. So if you apply and pay your deposit, um, which is all done at the same time anyway, um, by the end of June you get ten percent off your course fees. It doesn't matter whether you pay in one chunk or if you pay in instalments. The price is the same. Uh, we won't penalise you for paying in, in instalments. That's absolutely fine. Um, all the details of the, the sort of the fee structure are on the website because it depends on which course you want to do. But I will send an email after this with all the links so that you can look at those in your own time. Um, but I am the person to come to initially if you have any questions about any of the courses. And if I can't answer you straight away, I will direct you to the relevant tutor. Um, my, I will give you my email address because um, I will send an email and my mobile number is also on the website. So if you if you do have any questions at all, just don't don't hesitate to get in touch with me um, about anything. And as I said, I can always direct you to one of our principal tutors if I don't have the answer myself. But uh, yes, Matt. <laughs> just uh, am I right in saying that there is a discount for the PTC graduates? who want to then move on to the DIP AVRSM. Yes, yes, there's um, a fairly sizable discount, actually. If you've already done the CERT PTC and then you want to go on to the diploma course after that, um, you do get um, a discount as long as you do it sort of within 
five years of completing the course, um, then you get an alumni discount on the diploma course as well. And that partly, Lucinda always talks about this, but it's, she's very lovely, but she always says, oh, there's so much more work if they haven't done the PTC because you have to start from scratch and change the whole idea. I mean, when I say change, you don't have to change. We're not expecting you to necessarily change. You will find yourself how you want to be. But uh, there is a difference in, in the students who have done the PTC and quite often we find certainly Sally would also say because she actually does the licentiate diploma uh, which isn't running this coming year so she's actually back to the third PTC for for us hooray um, but uh, uh, she will certainly say as well that quite often we find the students who have gone through the year-long PTC their thinking their approach is completely different when they're then looking at the DPA BRSM and as Rihanna said <coughs> which I just needed to confirm <laughs> um, on, on, on just now but um, you do get a quite a sizable discount so it, it all becomes worth it if you want to just really refresh or indeed learn um, for your piano teaching entirely as well that's just something to add can I add one other thing Massa is playing a concert this Sunday afternoon which you can listen to online on his wonderful piano boat so if you google the piano boat you'll see amazing things and uh, you may well like to to join that it's a professional concert of course but it's something very very special and there's some wonderful videos up there as well we're so lucky to have you Massa well thank you we weren't going to mention it neither Brianna is the manager of the piano boat as well and uh, we, we're not very good at selling things so we weren't going to talk about it let's focus on the PTC we said but uh, in fact we had the piano open just for me to do some uh, sort of like this sort of fingertips but I think we've run out of time one little tip that I remember that Ilga talks about is that if you have any problems with pupils with fingertips which we do maintain they need to be able to have good fingertips is to think about kittens paws that's what uh, she always talks about very relaxed kittens if you think about their paws very relaxed but their claws are very strong and that's that works she she talks about um, some of her young uh, pupils that that works quite well but that's just some something on the side I got the piano out to demonstrate to some of these like technical elements but I think we've run out of time so we'll skip that um, Saturday One final question here um, yep. so most of our course days are actually on Sundays. Um, the, the residential weekends are, we're still trying to sort of work out the dates um, for a couple of them with Purcell um, around, their, around their holidays. But um, yes, most of our course days are on Sundays. The residential weekends may go over Saturdays, but in that case, we did have a student who was in a similar position and she, she didn't come on Saturdays. Um, but now, because we are recording all the lectures, that's not an issue you can catch up with the Saturday lectures you know at a time that's that's convenient to you so if you wanted to come on site um I'm you know you could make your own arrangements to go home and then come back on Sunday um I don't know how far you'd be traveling from or you could you know attend online I mean we can make something work because we have had a student who was in the same position previously and it it, it was fine um so you know, we'll, we'll be able to work around it, so don't worry about that. Okay. Right. Great. Okay, so as I said, I will send an email with all the details afterwards. Um, and if anything occurs to you, um, just please let me know. Um, but, you know, we wish you all the very best with your teaching, and we hope that you will join us on one of our courses, because you will not regret it. Um, I did the course myself in 2015 to 16. I was just starting at the time. I had two students, which is the minimum. I'd only been teaching for about six months um, and it's become, it's become my main earner now. Uh, last year I had about 40 students. I've reduced that because there's too many other things going on, but you know, it's, it's informed my teaching for so many years and it will continue to do so because it, it opened my eyes to a totally new way of teaching that I didn't even know existed. And I'm sure many of you are a lot more aware than I was at the time, but whether you've got 20 years of experience or two, it doesn't really make a difference because we've had students who with all different levels of experience and none of them leave any of the courses thinking I haven't learned anything. 
because we have such a wealth of knowledge from the tutors. So we really hope you will consider it. Um, but we do wish you the very best with your teaching. Feel free to get in touch and we hope to see you before too long. Thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye. Bye.